Hey everybody, welcome back to the last episode of our podcast series, The Art of Connected Parenting, where the founders of Sproutable are coming together to talk about the power of up-leveling, how we think about and understand our roles and relationships with our kids, and I think with ourselves, we've proven that in the last six weeks. Just to remind you of who we are, I am Casey O'Rourke, host of the Joyful Courage podcast, positive discipline lead, trainer, mom, adolescent lead here at Sproutable. With me are Alana Beebe, our managing director, brilliant, thoughtful mama, the boss. We like to call her the boss because she keeps us reined in. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. She tries. <laughs> and positive discipline parent educator. And my dear friend and sister from another mister, Julietta Skoog, also a mom, early years lead and positive discipline trainer. We remain really excited to continue to dig into this work with all of you. Thanks for being here and listening in. So last episode, we talked about the continuum of change and just how the practice doesn't always make everything perfect, but we start to experience our experiences differently when we are committed to this practice. And this week we're wrapping up the series with remembering where we've been and how to just keep leaning into that perseverance we need for the long haul, which is the lifelong opportunity of relationship with our growing kids. We're in the arena. We're in the arena and there are no exit doors. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) How do we stay on our feet, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Mm -hmm. how do we keep getting up? Who are we being called to be? Like, what's coming up for you two as we move into this final episode? Well, I love when just the idea of being in the arena with no door, no exit doors. (laughs) Gladiator style. Gladiator style. And I use that analogy a lot when I talk about siblings. Also, like, get them in the ring, get in the ring. This idea that... It is messy, and also that growth mindset lends with it, you know, that we've got to rumble, as Brene Brown says, and we've got to get in the thick of it to build the grit, Mm -hmm. to build the resilience, to evolve. Mm -hmm. We've got to be in it. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming up for me is run that growth mindset piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to get to growth mindset Mm -hmm. in a little bit. What about you, Alana? Yeah, for me, it's just this idea, like, you know, we – we, we talk, and we talked about this in the previous ones where, you know, we talk about parenting, like kindness and firmness or, you know, you know, being too kind or being too firm. And maybe there's this, you know, the gentle parenting idea of just like letting it be. It's okay. Like, I love you, you know, no matter what. And that's, a, that's you know, okay, but that's not really wor- where the real work is, mm-hmm. you know. And so we can get stuck in being tired and exhausted and just letting things go, right, and kind of yeah. laissez-faire, right. Or we can kind of let things go and then we can freak out and scream and yell and like shame, blame, whatever, go back to our old styles. But when we stay in it, Mm -hmm. when we stay in the work, we can get so much further, you know? And that's really what resonates for me. You know, it's it's like, it's our own story, it's our own work, but really we're always in it. Yeah. We're in it no matter what. Right. So if we ignore it until it festers and becomes a problem, it's a bigger problem and a bigger issue because we didn't deal with it in the first place. Or if we're so on it all the time, it's just like building stress in our bodies, mm-hmm. right? And um, I haven't talked about this in previous episodes, but like my previous work in working in public health, we know that ongoing stress rises cortisol levels and it leads to health terrible health, poor health outcomes for people. You know, you get heart disease and diabetes and all these things. We know this is from cortisol and from stress, from ongoing stress. So where do we want to live? Do we want to live in the place where we're doing the work and it is challenging? Or do we want to live in the place of constant stress because we're trying to control it and hold on so tight, right? Or do we want to live in the place where we just kind of let it go, right? Mm -hmm. Until it becomes a big problem, Mm -hmm. right? It's a visual of a ping pong ball. Yeah. Or not a ping pong ball, but what is it? What is it? The, the game from like pinball. happy days. Pinball. 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 Oh, I love pinball. <laughs> right. And I'm thinking love about the it. pinball. Like we, you, yeah. you can live in that place of unconsciousness, right? Mm-hmm. Non-intention. And it's just like, who's in charge of that? Like ping, 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 ping. Like yeah. you're just in reaction constantly versus yeah. like, okay, wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. But I'm, and, and I'm hearing the parents that we serve say, yeah, okay, I don't want stress. I do, oh, don't, of course, yeah, I don't want that. Stressful. But how, so how? 
I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. yeah, you know, how? And I, the thing that I think about, I was thinking of when you were saying uh -huh. that was, is the scene in Top Gun oh. when Maverick's like, Cook oh, you like that? <laughs> God, Casey's I love that eyes movie. Just lit up. For you those should of now watch the video if you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> but that idea of like when he's a like, cougar, engage, engage, cougar, yeah. engage. And it, I get really excited too. But it's that part. It's mm -hmm. just, it's that is the first step is to yeah. engage. You're yeah. already in the ring. Get in the ring. And have so the babies. People think, oh, I'm doing it wrong. But when you just start out with that intention and just say, all right, I'm, go I'm not going to get this perfectly right from the get go. Mm -hmm. I am going to, but I'm going to engage, mm -hmm. I'm going to get in the ring, I'm going to understand that it's going to be messy, I'm going to work on myself along with side my kiddo, and I'm going to understand that that's part of the work. Yeah. That it's not enough to say, they've got to do that, or I'm set in my ways, or this is just who I am, or, right. worked well, for me. worked for me. Yeah. That that is also part of that engagement, part of that sign, get in there. Well, and I think about, too, the episode that we did around what's my goal, what do I want to create, there's always this call, you know, like I think about who am I being called, what am I being called into, who am I being called to be in this moment, and before we get into how, right, it's also like fine-tuning our inner listening, like slowing things down enough to even recognize that there is a call, mm -hmm. right? Like there is an opportunity to pause and think, what does this moment actually need? Yes. Not only like, what tool does my kid need, but like, what does this moment, what is the energy, the quality, what is gonna serve, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Instead, and, and I think we get stuck in this, like I need to get back to comfort. I need to get back to comfort, I need to get yes. back to comfort, I need to get back to comfort so quickly that we pull whatever tools are easy accessible for us and we mm -hmm. throw those out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, I'm so comfortable again and move on mm -hmm. without doing that pause. Right. right. Okay. And it's like mm -hmm. the short, cheap version of comfort. Right. Right. And right. I'm sure it's the mm -hmm. same early years as it is teen years, right? It's it like, is, yeah. oh my gosh, the discomfort is so big. And mm -hmm. for our both ends, I think. I mean, but I notice we're all, we say, oh, especially yes. in the teen years. <laughs> yes. right? But I think we're going to throw that out because that, it's yes. really the same need, right? Like the need for them to have us be willing to be in discomfort with them mm -hmm. is this also this opportunity for both sides to be in the idea of, oh, I can be uncomfortable and I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I can be uncomfortable and I can move through it. And that idea of discomfort for young people, little people, mm -hmm. I hear this a lot from parents where they are so, they say, I'm just, I'm so activated by the distress of my child. Yeah. Because it's wired in us. Mirror neurons. A oh, mirror neurons. Talk about mirror neurons. <laughs> right? I mean, it is wired for survival. Like yeah. the deepest of the deep of the deep. Yeah. So... That is like, I mean, we're basically just on a, you know, robot here. Like, uh, it's so automatically ingrained in mm -hmm. us. And so there, there does have to be that intention not to let them sit in discomfort, but to, but to not be in such a reactive mode that we are only in primal mode all the time, you know? And so being able to play with, like, really our own reaction to that, our own grounding, our own regulating, our own sense of safety, we're totally safe here, yeah. Those that discomfort or crying or distress is communication, is telling me something, even yeah. though they can't say it with words. And so then that practice of attunement mm -hmm. and staying strong and regulated myself is that that's the work, you know? Right. And yes. Works. Well, and what's, as I listen to you and what you just said, attunement, right? Staying regulated ourselves. There is so much unspoken message when it's like, I see you in the hard, I see you in the struggle mm -hmm. and I'm okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm right here next to you. I'm mm -hmm. loving you. I'm okay. I'm on the rim, right? Brené mm -hmm. Brown talks about getting in the hole. Mm -hmm. I think it's so often that mm -hmm. we, parents of teens, probably parents of littles, we get in the hole and we're like, oh shit, I don't mm -hmm. want to be in the hole. And it's like, yeah. get out, get out, get out. Mm -hmm. How can we get out? And there's this added layer of like, it's not okay that I feel like this. 
I'm, you know, it just sends this message energetically mm -hmm. to our kids around like, you're not okay, right? Yeah. But when we can show up from this like grounded, connected place, you're mm -hmm. having a hard time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay, you're okay, I'm okay, you don't have to take care of me. Feelings are okay. Feelings, feelings are, okay. are okay. And yep. feelings come and go, and feelings don't last forever. And yeah. we don't, we are not all one at the same time. I just was feeling the Mr. Rogers presence in the oh, room yeah. with us. In that sense, beautiful where day. it's a beautiful in day in the neighborhood, <laughs> and that sense of you know, if we can tap into that piece that is within all of us, I truly believe everyone yeah. has a little Mr. Rogers because everyone has a beautiful, like our Buddha spirit, nature, Buddha mm -hmm. nature that is compassionate and patient and and deserving. Yeah, you know, deserving yeah. of all... dignity and space and respect and love I mean all that and so to open up that heart to our children in terms of that acceptance that true mm -hmm. un the true the true unconditional love you yeah. know embodying and that. that starts with accepting ourselves for having those feelings too that's yes. exactly right you know mm -hmm. we can accept ourselves we can accept our kids and we can accept them existing mm -hmm. in humanity mm -hmm. what a huge move if we could just do that oh right. my can we just God. do that just Please. Right. Do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you exactly. Know? Yeah. So, our fingers. But, right. But I think that the gift of the mirror neurons. I want to talk about mirror neurons for Do a second. Do it. Geek out right oh, now. I love, love it. it. <laughs> so, mirror neurons are the root of empathy. Their ability to feel other people's feelings. And if we didn't, here's like the blessing in that is that we do actually get to feel how our kids are feeling. So we don't have to just kind of guess like, oh, I'm guessing that they might be this. Mm -hmm. We really feel it. Mm -hmm. It happens in our brain. It's, it's natural. So if you think about, do you see someone take a sip of water or yawn and you do that? That is one way of how the mirror neurons work. And another way is the emotional contagion part of it, how we feel people's, we truly can feel people's feelings. And with our kids, it's so strong. So we're so connected mm -hmm. to them. And that's why when they're freaking out, we are freaking out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the blessing in all of that is that we actually know how they're feeling, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If we can roll ourselves right out of that hole and back up right, right to the rim, we're like, oh, you're feeling this because I'm feeling this. Mm -hmm. So I have a question right. for you guys about mm -hmm. this particular thing. Because as I'm listening to you, I'm like, yeah, feeling how they're feeling. And I'm thinking about, you know, for example, our child comes home, maybe they're a teenager, maybe they're a five-year-old, mm -hmm. and says, nobody likes me, right? And so yeah. those mirror neurons trigger, but an added layer is remembering that experience and having this heightened extra, oh my God, that was the worst for me. And so inside of this mirror neuron work is also the recognizing of what's their experience and then what is this old mm -hmm. experience of mine that's now kind of, adding kindling to this yeah. fire. So not only are we now in response to our kid, we're in response to our inner child. Well, right. and that's brings and that's us- that's exactly it. That's yes. where the work lies. And that's- that uh, is me, where it comes A together. lot of dots just connected for me. It's everyone. where those roads meet. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if, because if they came home and said something, whatever it was, and you didn't have your own visceral reaction to it, mm -hmm. there probably isn't a lot of internal work there for you, but you can yeah. hold the space for your kid and maybe it's an easy thing and you get through it, right? Yes. But it's the places where it brings up your stuff. Mm. where it rubs the wrong way when you have that visceral reaction where you have mm -hmm. to deal with your own stuff and that's oh where the gosh. work lies that's where and is. that's where we talked about the first episode that what is that reparenting it's those moments where you get to repattern yeah you get to give what you wanted or at least mm -hmm. try even if you don't know how to do that you yeah. get to have that awareness and try something new and i think that's the part when we think about like getting in the arena that when there are those moments of dread or that it brings up that part in us, mm -hmm. that's the signal to say, okay, we're mm -hmm. on the right path here. This is, mm -hmm. let's go, let's keep going instead of saying, I don't want to deal with that, it's too much, too fast, yeah. too, you know. Yeah, well, part. will you, <clears throat> so you've kind of teased this already. So let's talk about growth versus fixed mm -hmm. mindset, which kind of like reparenting, growth mindset is also like, a buzzy kind of word. It's mm -hmm. important, obviously, yes. we want it. We want to foster it in the classroom. We want to foster it in our kids. And But I want to start with how we start to pay attention to what our 
parenting mindset is. Are we in a fixed or growth mindset as parents and then move towards kids? So yes. talk about that. Sure. I mean, I and Alana also, you yeah. have a lot to say about this. I mean, to me, the growth mindset excitement, like why I get so hopeful working with children or families when, frankly, for a lot of the years that I was working in schools, there were a lot of really sad stories, hmm. really sad um trauma and I mean it just feels there's a lot of hurt in the world so much and the thing that kept bringing me back to be so hopeful or when I would be doing an evaluation with a kiddo that has a lot of disabilities or a lot of challenges cognitively or behaviorally is this idea of growth mindset that actually the neuroscience is so exciting. The field of neuroscience and the world that we're living in right now in the time is super exciting to know that it isn't just, well, that's how they are. Yeah, you know? too bad they had that experience. Too bad because the brain is malleable and there is this growth potential that we really can rewire our brains. And certainly the early years are so important and laying that strong foundation in terms of capacity. But but everything is is like able to grow and change. You know, there are ways to repattern, regrow. So within that growth mindset, or within that neuroscience field, and the incredible work and research that Carol Dweck gave us, and her all of the research out of Stanford around that really named it as a growth mindset is based on this idea that we are malleable, and that the way that we are with our children or with each other, the language that we use can also affect that. It can affect change. Mm -hmm. So I think that exciting possibility of saying, um, of just the, the opportunity to grow in that way. So mm -hmm. I think in terms of the parenting piece, I look at growth mindset as within the realm of executive functioning. And so this capacity to have a stronger integration, whole self, mm -hmm. and self-esteem, self -esteem, a huge part of the confidence. But also the idea of like thinking about perseverance, thinking about resilience, optimism, flexibility, empathy as these traits that can that can grow. So if I'm thinking about those le those places to lean into with my kids, and then also ideas of like goal setting or progress monitoring, kind of I use those as the tools within these, but. Thinking about, okay, if I want to work with this with my kiddo, you were talking about soccer and S Ben, for example, yeah. or um, we talked about motivation mm -hmm. last episode, then leaning into those places of perseverance or resistance or resilience, I've got to look at that for myself. Mm -hmm. So when I'm the parent that's giving up really quickly, saying, well, I tried, or now I'm just not going to do it anymore, mm -hmm. or, um, or no, it's got to be this certain way, I'm like, we're showing up with that fixed mindset, you know, which is yeah. the opposite of the growth mindset. Or and so, just how my kid is. Like, or it's, it's always like this, or it'll never be different. Right. 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 So that mm -hmm. to me, is just, it just layers into our other conversations around intention, around energy. You know, when we can when we can step a little bit back and think of it as a mindset, fixed and growth from the neuroscience place, it, we kind of hold a little more lightly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel so personal, you know. Yeah. It so. So even within our family, like our little nuclear family and within cl my classrooms too that I was in within our, the culture of a school, and schools are doing an awesome job, I have to say, about rolling this in. Because what happens with research is that it starts in the research and then there's a trickle down effect to curriculums and things like that. And it takes, it's it takes a, a glacial lot. speed. Right? Yeah. And so no there's now the that teachers. it's, even though it's been around for a long time and the neuroscience has been here, now we're finally getting some fruition within yeah. curriculum, especially around math for kids. And so there's this languaging that's happening within schools. So when we can start to match that at home also, our kids are then swimming in these waters. So within our little home too, that we just say, we we have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. We choose the challenge. Mm -hmm. We The power of yet. The power of yet. Mm -hmm. Dot, dot, dot. I can't do that yet. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes me yet. You know, like, <laughs> right? It's that Hang part. In there. It's yeah. that hopefulness of yeah. like, well, and it's not just that I'm going to work Versus, really hard. Well, what are you doing wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's wrong with you? Right? Yeah. But this idea of like, it's not just enough to be like persistent, persistent, like just keep trying because 
that also, if you're just, if, if you're not going anywhere, your wheels are spinning, that's not enough. It's that deeper piece of having that reflection, the resilience to be like, okay, that didn't work, Get but what up. did I learn from it? Right. And so that mm-hmm. also brings us into these mistakes or opportunities to learn place, mm-hmm. where as a parent, when we are truly like putting on the growth mindset, pajamas, you know, then we can show up with awesome, that we really are growing through that mistake. What did I learn from that? So that I can go to the 2.0, the 3.0 version. I just had a really good visual of a line of pajamas we could make. I, right? <laughs> I think it's because, yes, Halloween, I do like a good costume. I just, that's gonna be my next year, I think. Yeah. Well, and instead the other, of Mrs. Peacock from Clue. Okay. I mean, if for, no, if for no other reason, it feels better. Like, Absolutely. you guys, mm-hmm. it feels better Absolutely. to believe mm-hmm. that our people are capable, yeah. that and they're that, in that the works. learning, mm-hmm. that they're evolving and mm-hmm. growing, mm-hmm. and that we're capable of being their parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should tell them. Everyone. You are capable. You are capable. We're, people, we're are looking capable. right in the camera. I'm yeah. speaking right into my mic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people, you are totally capable. Everybody. Well, everybody mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Neuro- growth neuro- mindset for the planet. Yes. Yeah, neuroplasticity. Mm-hmm. Sproutable at the UN, right. please. Growing grow and change, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. One phrase we use at home, um, besides like we choose the challenge. So whenever optional things will come home for school or during the vacation, and our kids are like, "Oh, that's optional," we're like, mm-hmm, "Not for us." Like that's always we <laughs> we say yes, you know, to that. Um, but yeah. this idea. Tell that to Ian about the SATs, please. <laughs> yeah. He was like, optional, not going to do it. Like, oh. But this idea also of, um, of assuming positive intent, which we have a little, you know, side part, but just from the purity of kids, where when they mess up too, there's some modeling that we use around, I'm so sorry about that. That was not my intention. Like I take responsibility for what it did and so sorry. That, was, that wasn't my intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so hearing it get reflected back from our kids is really powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, when they mess yeah. up and say, oh, that wasn't my intention. I was trying to, okay, great. So then what do we need to do to get to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how then do we get there? how do we get there? And then it really is this culture of where you are in collaboration and a team with your kids. Mm-hmm. You're not just like, you do what I say because I'm the boss. Yeah. yeah. And you better not backtalk me. And then you, could, you don't have all the responsibility of fixing everything all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe some of you out there feel like you need to fix everything all the time. Maybe, maybe yeah. you do, maybe don't. I don't know. I know I hold that. But but how re- like, yeah, yeah. how relieving to let that go. Right. Yeah. Like I well, don't have to come with a solution. Yeah, I want to come back to choosing the challenge and tease oh, that a little sure. bit. Mm-hmm. And I and I have a story around that because sure. we had a little there was we had a little breakdown last year during basketball season and Ian didn't want to go. He was having a hard time. And I said, well, you get to choose what's hard because it's either going to be hard to show up and play your game tonight or it's going to be hard to navigate the unfolding of not going to your game tonight. Which do you, you know, which is the one that you're ready to to move through, Mm -hmm. right? And so when you say you choose the challenge, is that what you mean? Like talk about when you use that as a mantra. Well, and I also think about just in the teenager land and I'm sprinkling, you know, I'm practicing over here with the early years because it's getting bigger. But my understanding of teens, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, (laughs) just kidding, (laughs) is that really important skill of decision making. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we get to start all the way back with the littles of practicing making decisions mm-hmm. and deciding for themselves. And yeah. so the, what it looks like for littles is this idea of a limited choice and we say you decide, mm-hmm. right? So choosing the challenge might be within an academic role or an activity playing out. And so as a grown up, I might limit the choice so that they both are a challenge, mm-hmm. you decide. More of just choose the challenge, meaning we, we, when we notice, this is what I'm trying to cultivate for myself and for my kids too. When we notice that part of wanting to give up right now, we our awareness oh, okay. and we go that one extra edge. Okay. For example. Very perseverancey. Very, very perseverancey. So we were on a literally a hike, Leona and I, a few years ago. So she was little, she was probably three with a girlfriend in the Bay Area, shout out to Tilden. National Park and, um, or regional, sorry. But there's this moment where, of course, she's just like listening to two moms talk. She's going to peter out pretty quick. 
And so the meta, truly having this metaphor before me where we got to this place where she was like, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. Let's peace Wrap out. Yeah. And for me to pause and say, all right, I hear you. You are totally done. We're going to go. Now we're going to head all the way back to the car. Before we do that, let's see if we can push her, go a little bit further. Mm. So let's look together. I'm seeing this, see how it bends around and then it goes, to, let's put on our Batman cape, you know, our pre, like pretend Batman cape. Mm -hmm. And should we see if we can get all the way around, see if we can get a little challenge ourselves and get all the way? Just, yeah. So just these little, exa like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Planting the seed. In these yeah. small ways of, okay, we've hit our edge. Let's, is there anywhere else that we can go a little bit further? And then, and then we'll God, I needed that. you. I would have loved to have had you be my parent educator. Oh, <laughs> thanks for I the, love your story. I love it. Likewise, likewise. I know, I know. And, I know. and here's the thing, though. I was thinking about this is, you know, just because, Julieta, you lean into that didn't mean that was the right answer, right? And then we all get to have our own values and our own things that we want to teach and our own stuff that's going to come up. And just pulling this back to that other conversation that we had before, they're all, the whole community gets to teach kids. Like there's all these opportunities to learn mm. these things. It's not like every moment has to be, all these things get to need to be squeezed in or this needs to be the, the right thing, that it's just about the intentionality. That's it. Well, and it's not that it wasn't right. the right answer because it was the right for me, yeah. but that it was the, but that <laughs> it was the only, that it was the only answer. Correct. Right, that's right, right, right. It's yes. not that it was the right answer. It's that it's not the only one. It's there's not the so only answer. many ways, and that's right. the gift of everyone being, like you said, this whole village and all right. the offerings that people. Right. Have. And so then, shifting from what works to what's helpful. Right, right. Look and so like so you right. So like you working with Ian in the story, yeah. right? Just because you didn't lean into well what's that one push, right? Didn't mean that and it, and that you missed something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Right? Exactly. Okay, I didn't need you. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. It's just ever but I think there's that kind of just wanna, you know. Well and building important. and the growth mindset for parents right. is about listening to yourself it's not about someone else telling you what to do right. that's the fixed piece of just there is only one right way right i wish but, you were on my shoulder ex but cultivating right? that whole concept mm -hmm. yeah. but cultivating that inner parenting voice within mm. and turning that volume up turning that exactly because mm. you know you have the intuition mm. absolutely and that's the revolution and that's the revolution ah oh, wouldn't it be beautiful if we got to just show up in adulthood with a tiny little backpack, right, of our trauma from our childhood, like you were talking about, Casey, mm -hmm. in the instead first the one, instead of the U-Haul, um, I was just, you know, one, I just want to like bring it back to that first one because our first podcast, if you haven't heard it as part of the series, is really talking about our own childhood and the things that we are bringing then into our adulthood and into our parenting space and the stories that we tell about that and how that looks for us. And just, you know, as we've gone through this conversation now in six different series, and I, now I wish it was 12, but we're gonna stop it here. <laughs> you know, just just thinking through, you know, how, how we can really evolve as humans. I mean, that, that's the whole goal here, is really thinking about how we can grow and get better, right? Without, without this knowledge of actually where we're going necessarily, mm -hmm. which is a fascinating thing. But what if, you know, what if this future that I have seen, that I see, and this thing that, that really, the, my passion behind Sproutable and the work that we're doing is this idea that we're working with our kids and instead of bringing the U-Haul trauma and, you know, shame and, you know, uh, lack self of self-doubt. Self yeah. I was like, lack of self-esteem, what's opposite? Self-doubt, all of these things. Instead of showing up with all of that, right? What if they showed up with a U-Haul of tools mm. to deal with life, mm. right? To, to have good relationships, to get through the messy things. What if they showed up with a U-Haul of that and a backpack of trauma mm -hmm. instead of the other way around? And that's where, yeah. that's where we showed up, right? We showed up with a tiny little fanny pack of tools, maybe. Maybe yeah. a backpack, yeah. depending on you mm. and your story, right? Back pocket. <laughs> and a you of <laughs> like, trauma and stuff we want to like, let go of. And we're spending all this time doing that work. What if we had just gotten to adulthood and we had the opposite? What kind of world would we have? What would that look like? Yeah. Right? How would we be solution focused? How would we solve big world problems? What would it look like if we weren't just pointing our fingers at everyone else? Well, they're not doing their work. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting over here, right? Yeah, and you mentioned yeah. like early on in the series that retelling of our story. And when I think about the evolution of my relationship with my mom specifically, mm -hmm. through my growth as a mom, I like, it, 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 it's, I sit inside of so much gratitude because, because of who she was and I feel like it has fueled so much of what I do and who I am in the best possible way, mm -hmm. right? And I, and there's just so much gratitude there. And because of that, we've been able to have this really incredible relationship and her evolution has been possible, which is, you know, we all make our own choices around how we grow. I'm really grateful for that. And then the passing on, like that interruption, yeah. right? Roan's gonna be a different mom than my, than how I was parented. You know, she'll have to go to therapy for it. Well, she does, but you know, but you all have tools, backpack well, of issues. Right. And I'll say too, just to carry the theme, you know, when I think to, told my story in the first episode, that U-Haul of that really sad year, my mom being super sick, that was inadvertent. They didn't want it to happen. It wasn't a trauma yeah. of being, you know, a, in a, in an intentional parenting way. It Never was just is. what happened to yeah. the family. And what I then grew, you know, the tools that I grew out of that experience from an inner child's place of, I can, I can do hard things. Mm -hmm. Having those coping skills of independence and really a loyalty with relationships within the family too. And so then in this new way, that opportunity that I get to give in this next generation of not having to have that terrible experience in order to grow those things. Right. That those things are so important, you know, and I feel so grateful. I think that's where I want to go with this is I really feel so grateful. And in fact, I've been meaning literally to call my parents and tell them this. Then I'm like, should I text it? And they're like, no, I'll call. And then I inevitably have it. Maybe, not maybe yet. Maybe we should so, do this as a straddable. Practice. Reels for Instagram? No, I'm just kidding. Call for my parents. <laughs> but what I was going to say is parents. that I, I really have yeah. noticed just recently that the voice that I do, that I have within me is so loving and so mm -hmm. encouraging. Mm -hmm. And I know that came from that. Like that's not, that has not been, I mean, what the really deep one. And so I think like how grateful I am that there was still this message of love through all of that, you know, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of heartache as a young child, but deep down I felt loved. And so in this, you know, as I grew those kinds of early autonomy independence skills, feeling alone, feeling not seen as a first grader within that school as well, that to be able to reparent that in the next generation with my own kids is such a gift because I really get to pass those along without having that U-Haul truck of the sickness and the cancer. Right. And and I think there's, you know, we have this misconception that we that we can only learn through pain. Mm -hmm. That it has to hurt exactly. in order to learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I I just want to reframe that completely. Yeah. Exactly. We absolutely can learn from pain. And that is our work and our job as individuals to get through that and that's where this is our individual process. But we don't need our kids to feel pain to learn. Yeah. They don't have to learn it that way. They don't have to learn responsibility, independence, and resilience, and grit, and all this and stuff capability. through pain. Right. They mm -hmm. can learn it in many different ways, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And and that's I just I just think we really need to reframe that from our parenting or teacher perspective. I'm also getting a little ping to acknowledge that there's probably plenty of people that are listening and watching who don't have current adult relationships with their parents where that, mm -hmm. I mean, where it's a really big stretch to find gratitude. So like talk, oh, yeah. a, you know, like that's not everybody. That. Yeah, that's not well, everybody's experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just want to acknowledge mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, and I just wanted to differentiate well, what the U-Haul truck can be. Sure, that sure, also sure. like there's different levels of, which this is, I, cause I am glad you said this, yeah. this is what, but, where ours is different, different. But but no, but the practice of gratitude is your practice of gratitude. It's not mm -hmm. your practice of gratitude with your relationship with your parents necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that will be an amazing opportunity with your parents mm -hmm. and I didn't have a relationship with my mom before she passed away, and that was what was healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And I still had a practice of gratitude of all the things I got to learn from her. 
You know, right. I did my own journaling and my own listing out of these are all the things I learned from her from the ways that she showed up and the way that I want to show up. You know, she was right. really loving and goofy and funny and silly, you know, all of those things. And then here's all the things that she did that I don't want to do and yeah, I yeah. don't want to repeat. And I'm grateful that I got to learn the lesson through her so I don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. I saw mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You know, I yeah. experienced it. Yeah. And I don't have to do those. I don't have to make those mistakes. So yeah. I so the, there there's a huge gratitude for my mom and everything that she taught me in that childhood. And mm-hmm. same with, with my dad too. I'm just using her as an example mm-hmm. for this. But I, you know, I think it's it's that perspective of gratitude. It, when you do that, when you can embrace that and you can embrace the messing it back to embracing the messiness, yeah. right? When you yeah. can embrace it, then you can learn. Mm-hmm. Right? Then you can solve, then you can, you know, move forward. You know, it's, gratitude, love, it's the gratitude for the lessons. Well, right? and I just exactly. love being a part of a generation of people that are ever more likely to lean into personal growth and intention and presence, Beautiful. right? Because here we, we're here. We're ready. Yeah. We're ready, we're ready I, for this. You yeah. know, however you feel about your parents, that just wasn't those, you know, personal growth was not a catchphrase. It was not something that was normalized or broadcast. You know, it just wasn't a part of their... Well, and it's interesting you say this because my mom, her mother died when she was seven. And so she really, when she became a mother, she she really approached it. She's a scientist from that like, well, I really don't know what I'm doing. So I am going to go and get a book. Yeah. And there was, it was this like parenting effective training, the PET model. And that's where she just said, well, I was just going to, you know, listen. And I was just going to make you all be as, you know, offer opportunities for you to be Everybody except for Grammy. Capable. Well, but I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying about Grammy oh, is that yeah. there was how rare it yeah. was, yeah, how yeah. there was like, Amazing. really had nowhere to go. And now through because she, this generation, right. Yeah. But that this generation, to your point, that like, how awesome that we are part of this yeah. revolution. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm picturing us again from the beginning. You said, Alana, mm-hmm. we're all walking down the street like we're our own parade everyone's coming all in. all of our all friends like, doing that parent yeah. edward we're picking up join us seat. jump in exactly yeah. so it's exactly. that part that's like it used to just be you know there wasn't anything before and now there is yeah and yeah. so that part of truly opening up the doors saying yes tell me more yeah. you know for all of us, how's it going in that? What's yeah. working? What's what's helpful over here in this yeah, house? Good job. Nice. What's helpful over here? You know, oh, that's cool. I'll try that. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I love but it. But just you be know? open. Just be open. Be open. Be open. Ah, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, dignity and respect for all. So yes. So who's gonna close us down with the uh, Adler? With well, there's the yeah. Adler, and then there's the mission. Oh, that's Sproutable. I do want to talk about this. Okay. Which one? All right, this is the mission statement at Sproutable, and I think that in closing this whole series, I just thought this was an important thing to say because this is something that Casey and Julieta and I, oh, wow, coming up with a mission statement, first of all. Yeah. It takes a long time. It takes some work. It takes some work. But this is something we really stand behind and something that's really important to us, and I think it captures the essence of what we have been talking about today. So this is just part of it. You can go to our website, to our About Us page, if you want to read the rest. Hmm. <clears throat> At its heart, Sproutable stands for a world where every human knows that they matter. We believe in everyone's potential for growth. We believe relationship matters. We believe in boundaries with love. We believe in tools that support your heart and your children. Mm. You know, it's about mm-hmm. potential. And that's yeah. what we're talking about today. Like, we believe in the potential mm-hmm. for humans to change and grow and be better to show up better, to feel better mm-hmm. to have better relationships to make you know to figure out the hard stuff we have a lot of hard things to figure out mm-hmm. and yeah. we need our kids we need the next generations and ourselves we all need to work hard to come up with solutions we need to be solution focused we have to be creative we have to have these things and we don't want to waste it like i think that we shouldn't be wasting any more time just dealing with our inner personal drama when there's so much out there that we could yeah. really be coming together on and working towards, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the Adler quote, right? Alfred Adler believed that all problems are interpersonal relationship problems. So we need yeah. the U-Haul trucks to pull up full of yeah. tools. Full of tools. Exactly. For how to relate, to be mm-hmm. in relationship mm-hmm. with each other. So good. 
This was amazing. <laughs> so good. I love you too. I love you too. I love everybody that's watching and listening. Thank you. Thank you for trusting you. us and tuning in and Thank you. being hopefully entertained and inspired. <laughs> um, yeah, we're here for you. We're here for you. Let us know if you want more of these. Yeah. Email us. Yeah, we can do another season. Yeah. See, this is just the first season of the series. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll <laughs> see you soon. Thank you all. Bye.